We welcome you to the Master of Trading. This course includes all the information you need to know, in order to become an independent and successful trader. The amount of people who unfortunately lose money in trading is very high, and this is due to a lack of knowledge of the basic concepts. Unfortunately, on the internet, there is a lot of false information, often free, and sites whose only goal is to make you lose money. The first rule is to not trust any analysis or signal, which can be found on the internet. The only signal to enter the market must be a product of your own analysis and skills. The first investment to make is in education. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest. It is important to understand the mechanism of the markets, and improve to manage your emotions, in order to correctly manage your trading capital. Our goal, with the realization of this course, is to teach every aspect of trading, from psychology, to risk management, to technical analysis and fundamental analysis, helping you to generate the best strategies that suits your personality. Identifying a strategy that reflects your way of thinking, acting, and your risk tolerance, will be essential to be successful in the long run. If you have any questions throughout the course please contact us privately, and we will be happy to assist you at any time. Forex is an abbreviation for foreign exchange market. The Forex market is simply the global market that allows the exchange and speculation of one currency for another. The Forex market is the most liquid and active market, among all the financial markets present today. The daily variations of exchange rates allows traders to buy and sell currency pairs. By changing country and exchanging our currency for another, we unwittingly become participants of the Forex market. The Forex market is the largest financial market in the world, with a daily volume of over $5 trillion. To understand how big this market really is, it is important to know that the stock market has a daily liquidity of only $22 billion. The Forex market is an exchange bank that has no physical headquarters, unlike the stock market, and is open 24 hours a day for 5 days a week. It opens on Sundays at 10 p.m., and closes on Fridays at 10 p.m. In the world of finance, there are two main figures who dominate the market, the bulls and the bears. These two animals are taken into account due to the way they attack their enemies. Bulls attack upwards using their horns, while bears attack downwards using their claws. The bulls are the buyers who speculate in the growth of a particular asset. Their purpose is to buy low and sell high to make a profit. The bears, on the other hand, are the sellers who speculate in the decline of a given asset. Their purpose is to sell high and buy low to make a profit. The forex market is divided into various access levels, based on the size of the transactions. The main participants in this market are governments, central banks, commercial banks, investment funds, pension funds, and private investors. Governments have many reasons for controlling the value of their currency, and they usually do so, by holding the debt of another state, or a large portion of their reserves. It is good for governments to have a debt with another state, because this ensures that their currency does not depreciate too much. If the United States of America borrows $50 trillion from China, China will want its money back, and as a result China has a vested interest, that the US dollar does not depreciate too much. It is all a game of strategy on which the world economy is based. Central banks are the most important participant in this market together with governments. Central banks have the power to decide whether to raise or lower interest rates, and the market as a result will immediately start moving sharply. The central banks we refer to are the Federal Reserve System, the European Central Bank, the Bank of Japan, the Bank of England, the Bank of Canada, the Reserve Bank of Australia, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, and the Swiss National Bank. Commercial banks are the famous market makers, also known as those who create the market. Commercial banks are important participants, who can move price as they wish. They control large amounts of money, and can open positions that cause important continuation or reversal price movements. The large commercial banks issue the largest transactions in the forex market. Investment funds and pension funds are organizations, that manage huge amounts of capital, provided by private clients and the government. These funds speculate a large amount of money in the market, creating profit for themselves and for their clients. Investment firms and pension funds invest trillions of dollars using a conservative approach. In fact, their purpose is to protect the accumulated capital, and guarantee the payment of pensions. These two participants do not influence the daily fluctuations, but when they decide to enter or exit a position, they can generate large trend reversals, taking away or adding liquidity to the market. Large private speculators who open multi-billion dollar positions, can have a concrete impact on the price movement of currency pairs, 
and this also applies to retail traders with large amounts of capital, such as the famous George Soros, which invests in currency pairs, with multi-billion dollar positions. By entering the market with positions of this size, you can certainly influence the direction of the price. Commercial traders are participants who do not speculate in the daily fluctuations of the forex market, but use the market as a tool to hedge global deals, and a potential devaluation of the currency in which they place their interest. Commercial traders use a trading technique called hedging. Multinational companies like Google, having offices all over the world, and paying salaries in different currencies, convert huge amounts of different currencies each month, which can also influence the movement of the market. Another influential participant are the speculative companies, also known as hedge funds. In fact, hedge funds are companies that invest large amounts of capital, speculating exclusively on the fluctuation of the price of certain assets, holding positions for days, weeks, months or even years. These companies have a strong impact on the market, and use an aggressive approach thanks to their experience and investment philosophy. Traders with smaller capital are called retail traders, and have no impact on the market due to insufficient liquidity. For retail traders it becomes essential to understand the psychology of the market, technical analysis, and fundamental analysis, so that they can create their own trading system, following the main trend fluctuations created by the major participants in this market. Decades ago, the forex market was only accessible to financial companies, large corporations, hedge funds, central banks, and investors with large amounts of capital. Traders with a small capital, also known as retail traders, didn't have access to the forex market. The first method of exchange in the form of currency was in 1875 with the birth of the gold standard, in which gold and silver became the main currencies for global payment. Later in 1944, it was established that the US dollar would take the place of gold, becoming the main global exchange currency. The forex market was not invented as a form of speculation, but was created and used to facilitate the exchange of currencies in global affairs between international companies. The forex market doesn't have a physical headquarter or a central government body, and for this reason it is called a decentralized market. There are only government bodies, which issue financial regulations and licenses, to various financial intermediaries such as banks and brokers. Thanks to the technological innovation, the forex market uses an over-the-counter system, in other words an electronic banking system which allows anyone anywhere in the world to be able to invest in the forex market. Today 90% of transactions are exclusively generated by banks, investment companies, and large private speculators, to take advantage of the various daily price fluctuations of specific assets. The remaining 10% of the forex market is used for international trade. The forex market is based on the buying and selling of currency pairs. Before studying the various currency pairs, we must analyze which currencies are available to trade in this market. In the forex market, currency trading has the simplest regulations, and has the greatest overall liquidity. The main currencies, with the greatest trading activity in the forex market are The US dollar The euro The British pound The Japanese yen The Swiss franc The Canadian dollar The Australian dollar And the New Zealand dollar we then have a huge list of exotic currencies, that are basically all the currencies of smaller or emerging economies. The most traded exotic currencies, which have now acquired an important role in the world economy, are The Hong Kong Dollar The Singapore Dollar The Turkish Lira The Danish Krona The Norwegian Krona The Swedish Krona And the South African Rand Other important currencies to keep into consideration for their huge economies are the Chinese renminbi, the Indian rupee, the Brazilian real, the Russian ruble, and the Mexican peso. 41% of world trades are made in US dollars. 30% of world trades are made in euros. 12% of the world trades are made in Japanese yen. The remaining 17% of world trades are made in other currencies. Currencies consist of three letters. The first two letters represent the country of reference, while the last represents the name of the currency. Let's see some examples for the major currencies. This is the breakdown for the US dollar. This is the breakdown for the British pound. This is the breakdown for the Japanese yen. This is the breakdown for the Swiss franc. This is the breakdown for the Canadian dollar, Australian dollar, and New Zealand dollar. The only exception to this rule is the euro. In the forex market, Currencies are traded in the form of pairs. In a pair, 
the first one represents the base currency, while the second one represents the quoted currency. The base currency always equals to 1, while the value of the quoted currency is always equal to the price found on the chart. Let's take as an example the currency pair euro US dollar at the price of 1.1750. The euro is the base currency, while the dollar is the quoted currency. If the price of the chart is 1.1750, it means that 1 euro will cost 1.1750 dollars. The Japanese yen is the only currency that is always quoted. Trading in the forex market is the simultaneous buying of one currency and the selling of the other. If you decide to buy dollar yen, you are automatically buying the dollar and selling the yen. This mechanism is crucial to understand. When buying the dollar yen pair, your analysis should indicate that the yen is weak against the dollar. It is essential that there are strong confluences, in which demonstrate that the dollar is stronger than the yen. In the forex market you have the option of both buying and selling a specific currency pair. Buying a currency pair means, that you are always buying the base currency, and selling the quoted currency. While selling a currency pair means, that you are selling the base currency, and buying the quoted currency. In the forex market, selling a currency pair is as simple as buying a currency pair. The forex market has no rules for selling, and the mechanism is as simple as when you decide to buy a certain asset. For example, by selling the pair euro Australian dollar, we are speculating that the Australian dollar is stronger than the euro. When buying, you speculate on the strength of the base currency, while when you sell, you speculate on the strength of the quoted currency. Major currency pairs are all the pairs that contain the US dollar, and they are the most traded pairs by new traders, making them the most liquid pairs in the market. Currency pairs that do not contain the US dollar are called cross pairs. The most liquid cross pairs are called minor pairs, and are those that contain the euro, the yen and the pound. Exotic pairs, on the other hand, are pairs formed by a major currency united to a currency of an emerging economy, such as Brazil, Mexico or Singapore. Exotic pairs have the highest spreads, because they are traded by less traders and therefore have less liquidity. The euro-dollar pair is the most liquid in the market, and represents 30% of the total daily volume of the forex market. The pound-dollar pair is less liquid but more volatile, than the euro-dollar pair. The British pound, the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar are part of the British Commonwealth, and they are all base currencies against the US dollar. The Canadian dollar, the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar are also known as commodity pairs, because their economies are rich in natural resources. Currency pairs, like people, have their own specific and different characteristics. They have different characteristics because different people like to invest in different currency pairs, and the movements reflect their different personalities. All professional traders have preferences and reasons for the currency pairs they have decided to invest in. It is important to choose specific currency pairs to focus on. To be successful in the forex market, it is advisable to initially study only one single currency pair at a time. Gradually, as you gain more experience, you will be able to insert a second currency pair to focus on, then a third, and then a fourth. Professional traders create a watch list, that is a list of all their favorite pairs to study that are saved on their analysis platform, and constantly monitor them to take advantage of the various market opportunities. It is important to always filter currency pairs, entering in the market only when strong setups are formed. We suggest opening a maximum of two trades at a time, even though focusing on just one is the best choice. The Forex market is divided into three main sessions, the Asian session, the European session and the American session. Sessions are essential to understand, in order to select the hours in which you want to invest depending on where you live, what type of trader you decide to be, what type of volatility you prefer and which currency pairs you have chosen to focus on. Each pair moves differently during each of the three sessions, and that is why there are different techniques to use, for the different moments of the market. The Asian session is the initial session of the trading week. This session starts at 11 p.m. and closes at 8 a.m. GMT. The main economic center that drives this session is Tokyo, however other important economic centers have an important role in this session, such as China, Australia, New Zealand, and Russia. Tokyo is the center of the Asian session, as it provides the largest volume of trading positions. The Asian session has the lowest volatility of the three sessions. It is also defined as the most calm and silent of the three. During this session, price often fluctuates in small ranges of space, also known as consolidation. Breakouts are very rare in this session, so a breakout trading strategy is not recommended. Breakouts can occur when there are high-impact news releases. In this session, However, different range trading strategies can be applied, 
which are used by a lot of professional traders. Range trading strategies, means to simply sell at resistance, and buy at support. The European session is the most volatile session of the three, especially at the opening with the London session. In this session we can encounter sharp reversals, and often even the largest movements of the day. This is the session that generates the most pips on average. During this session we find true, but also false breakouts of the current support and resistance levels of the Asian session. In this session you can use breakout trading strategies, but above all trend trading is the best, opening trades in the direction of the short-term trend mostly found on the one-hour time frame. The session starts at 7 a.m. and finishes at 4 p.m. GMT. The American session is the second most volatile session of the three. The economic center that runs this session is New York. Other important economic centers in this session are Canada and Mexico. This session starts off at noon and finishes at 8 p.m. GMT. In this session we often find high-impact news releases, causing volatile price movements especially for the US dollar and the Canadian dollar. The most intense moments in the market are during the overlapping sessions. The American session has its greatest liquidity, during the overlap with the European session. Overlap means that two sessions are open at the same time. There are two overlaps, one between the Asian session and in the European session, and the other between the European session and the American session. There is no overlap between the American session and in the Asian session. The overlap between the European session and the American session is the busiest and most liquid time in the market. Both sessions are active in these four hours, and it is the most volatile time of the day, and at the same time the most risky. Volatility lovers keep an eye on these four hours, especially for the amount of financial data that is released.